بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are discussing the holy verses of Quran and understanding them based on the narrations of Ahlul Bayt عليهم السلام We have reached the verse إهدنا الصراط المستقيم Within the previous episode, we discussed some very important points, and we, inshallah, we will continue. إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. There are people who are on the right path. Then why they keep asking and saying on a daily basis, Oh Allah, guide us to the right path ten times a day. It's a very valid question. Why we keep asking? Why we keep asking? Many answers, inshallah, we will discuss it. Number one, in order for us to stay on the right path, we are in need of Allah's constant help, aid, to be on the right path. Because there are many obstacles that we face and we challenge on a daily basis, that any of those obstacles, it has the potential to deviate us from the right path. When I receive a question or a doubt within my aqeedah and my belief or about ahkam, a person comes and asks, why do we need to pray? Can we just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, my heart is pure. Can I just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verbally, why prayers? Or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in need of our prayers? Why hijab? Why zakat? Why khums? Why hajj? And all of our fu'adim. Why do we believe in God? Who said God exists? And all of the questions that the more we are going, the more we are receiving these questions. So some people have knowledge. Some people have the tools to be able to understand themselves and answer the questions. Some people will ask, but some people will be silenced. And that becomes a good action plan. Anytime that you receive a doubt, you receive a question, you think of something that doesn't make sense within the religion, find an expert. What did I say? Find an expert. I'm going to repeat myself. Find an expert within the religion and ask them. Don't leave that doubt in your mind. Because when you leave that, mind, that doubt in your mind, first doubt adds another doubt, adds another doubt, adds another doubt, and more and more and more, slowly, slowly we see that doubt will take over our belief and we start doubting the religion, doubting the existence of God, and more and more, and God forbid we will see that I don't want to mention where we will end up not believing God and not praying and not believing any of the moralities and any of the narrations and the Quran and so on and so forth. So please, that becomes a good action plan. When you see a post on the Facebook, when you see a question, or when you are confronted with some misconception about the religion, about the belief, about the spirituality, about our practices, about our rituals, find an expert and ask them about it. And Alhamdulillah, this day and age, all of our social medias, our phones, and all of our, we have enough tools to be able to access an expert, a religious scholar, and answer them the question. So we need constant blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constant tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be on the right path. That doesn't mean that when I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah place me on the right path, He should let go of me. Remember the hadith that we mentioned in the previous episode, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, who is at the peak, he kept repeating, oh, and he used to shed tears and it said, oh, Allah, don't leave me to myself, even for a glance of an eye, I might be deviated because of the obstacles that are in front of me, because of the obstacles that are placed in front of me by shaitan who wants to deviate me and who swore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will deviate them all except with exceptions and the rest of the verse. So number one, we need constant blessings. An example will be uh, when we see a light, for example, we have a light here. These lights are in need of being connected to the generator and they are in need of receiving energy from the genera generator of the electricity to be on. As soon as we turn them off, they go off. So for us to be on this right path, we are in need of receiving Allah's blessing to be on the right path. Because of the challenges, because of the difficulties, because of the obstacles, every 
thing every minute we can deviate. So we keep, we keep needing, again, going with the example, if somebody comes and disconnects the wires that is connected to the light, okay, it will be turned off. Well, challenges are like someone who's disconnecting us from the originator and from the one who is blessing us to stay on the right path. And when Allah gives us the blessing, second, why we, keep, we have to keep saying and sincerely believing it. Our salah, our recitation of Surah Al-Hamd in our salah should be really, really helping us straighten our path every day, every day. We hear something, we deviate, we come back again, we come back again. المستقيم, on a daily basis, we need it. So when we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why we keep repeating it? When Allah gives, we might do something within these blessings that He has given us that we deviate. And Allah will take this blessing away from us. So we say, because amongst the first and the highest ranking of blessing, it's being on the right path, as we said within the previous episode, for us to be on the right path in every decision that we are making in our aqidah, in our jurisprudential aspect of our lives, in our moralities, we need to be on the right path in every aspect. If we are not, if we abuse the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, he might take it away. So we say, Oh Allah, I was deviated. Bring me back. Guide me onto the right path. We are not sure that we will be on the right path until the end. That's the third answer. Why we need to keep saying it. Unfortunately, we see a sect within the Islam that they consider they don't pray. They have some kind of rituals which is not prayer. Why we ask them? They consider themselves to be Muslim. But they say we don't pray because we have reached the level of certainty. We have reached the level of yaqeen. Hence, we don't pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we have reached the yaqeen. And they bring a verse of Quran to justify their action of not praying and not abiding by the sharia. Not following the teachings of Rasulullah and Ahl Bayt salam as far as zakat is concerned, as far as khums and hajj. And all um, encouraging good, discouraging evil, for ad deen basically. Because they say we have reached a level of certainty. Our question to them would be, Rasulullah did ha didn't reach the level of certainty and he kept praying until the last day of his life. He had certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see there were people who were religious and pious individuals. However, we see they didn't have a good ending. I see unfortunately when I go through different communities, some of the elder members of the community, they come to me, age 55, 60, 65, they say, Shaykh, your lectures were good for the youth. Alhamdulillah, our faith, our belief, our moralities, our acts of, acts of worship are like nail, nail within the wall. We won't bend. We are on the right path. We have secured our faith. Who, who said so? We have a lot of examples within the history that people who were righteous people, who were religious, but unfortunately, because of the events that happened, because of the test that they were going through, they were deviated. One of them that was from far, far, far history by the name of Bal'am al-Ba'ura. We read in chapter 7, verse 175. Bal'am al-Ba'ura was a righteous, religious individual during the time of Prophet Musa ala nabina wa alayhi salam. Allah says, chapter 7, verse 175. Allah says, relate to them an account of him to whom we gave our signs. Allah gave his signs to this individual. How much he was elevated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him from his signs. And he had Asma'ullah al-A'zam, some of the names of... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he was able to do some miracles. But he cast them off. Thereupon Satan pursued him and he became one of the perverse. People came to him and they talked to him from Bani Israel and other people. They convinced him that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How about you come and go on top of the mountain and start cursing Prophet Musa ala nabina wa alayhi salam. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to basically destroy Musa and kill Musa. This person who has been given some of Allah's signs, he wants to use it against Allah's Messenger. So, we want to be make sure what Allah has given us, use it for the right path. All of our abilities, all of our potentials, all of our energies, all of our tools and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us for us to make sure we use it on the right path. That is from far, far history. 
very closer than that we see during the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Zubair, famous companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam said how many times it was there that Zubair with his sword relieved pain and hardship from the chest of Rasulullah. Basically he was there at the forefront to defend Rasulullah. But we see that after Rasulullah's departure and people they go through the test of the, are they going to follow Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman or they will be with Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He comes and he stands with Aisha against the commander of the faithful, Amin al-Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, the battle of Jamal. And Imam says, look at his ending. al-Mustaqim. You might have a good start, but it is important at the end. Why we keep repeating Ahdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim? Because we want to be on, our, on the right path all the way where our soul reaches our neck and it's about to come. We want to be on the right path and leave this world being on the path and the right path. And we have other examples within the history where we can read that they didn't have a good ending. It is very, very important. When we recited that we believe, oh Allah, I really want to be on the right path. Oh Allah, please aid me. I, unto you, I'm coming back for help that you keep me on the right path. Please don't let go of my hand. And another answer, answer that why we keep repeating in our salah, we want to get higher and higher in the level, level of guidance. We can't, we can't compare the level of guidance that Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was and Salman, even Salman minna ahl al-bayt. But there is no comparison between the level of guidance because the level of guidance of Allah is infinite. So every day we want more of the guidance. We want to be more and more firm believer and the right path. Where Allah says in chapter 19, verse 76, Allah enhances in guidance those who are rightly guided. They are already guided, but Allah wants to enhance and increase. That's why we keep repeating, we get to a beautiful hadith by the commander of the faithful, Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, by the, for the definition of what is Ahdana al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem means and why we keep repeating and insisting every day, minimum 10 times, Ahdana al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. And Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, where he says, Fi qawlihi, Ahdana al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem. My mom says, I am explaining to you what is Ahdana al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem means, guiding us to the right path. قال أدم لنا توفيقك الذي به أطعناك في ماضي أيامنا. والله I want you to continuously, we want you to continuously bless us to obey you the same way that we obeyed you في ماضي أيامنا. In the previous days, we want to keep praying to you, obeying you, worshiping you. حتى so un until نطيعك كذلك في مستقبل أعمارنا The same way that we were worshipping you and obeying you before we want to keep worshipping you and praying for you, to you all the way in our up days and days that are coming. So it is very important that it was we answered the question why we kept repeating why do we keep repeating even though we are inshallah on the right path the path of Muhammad and Al Muhammad why we keep repeating it, these were some of the answers. The right path must be firm, adamant, immune from deviation, and should be shortest and fastest. This is basically is rational. See, we have point A and point B. There is only one way that is the fastest, shortest, adamant. When we come straight to here, that doesn't have any curve, this is the shortest and fastest. Any intellectual will agree with us that when we want to go from point A to point B, we have to find the path that is safest, shortest, adamant, firm, it will get us to the direction and we are safe and secure without curve. Because any other, any other line between these two, point A and point B, any other line will have some curve, will be the longest. And who guarantees that it will give us to our destination? So it is one path that we have, as we mentioned within the previous episode, we will keep, we will re remind ourselves, ourselves that it is only one path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot argue that there are many paths to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not rational based on the verse of the Holy Quran that 
the right path that we have to keep in mind. And we are reaching to this point that اهدنا الصراط المستقيم the shortest, firm and adamant, immune from deviation and the fastest, no curve or twist to this path. So what is this right path? We discussed there are not, there are no ways to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only one way, one path and this path needs to be adamant and firm. What is this path? Do we find this answer within the Holy Quran? Has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleared for us the path or should we just go and find our own path? Inshallah, we will discuss it within the next episode. We will conclude our lecture by praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Ajallah ta'ala Farjah Sharif so he will help us inshallah be firm on our right path inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim allahumma kun li waliyyika al-hujjah ibn al-hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaihi fi hadhihi as-sa'ah wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin